Now that we've defined the determinants of n by n matrices using cofactor expansions, link in the description to the lesson where we do that, we can further develop this definition by looking at some properties of the determinant and some alternative methods to calculate it. Today, we'll be looking at the special case of triangular and diagonal matrices and how our definition of the determinant leads to a pretty nice, easy calculation for these matrices. Here is the theorem. We will use this when we talk about finding determinants using row operations, but for now let's just read through this. If A is an n by n triangular matrix, upper triangular or lower triangular, or it could be diagonal, then the determinant of A is the product of the entries on the main diagonal of the matrix. So the determinant of A is just A11 times A22, etc., all the way up to A and N. I'm not going to do a rigorous proof of this theorem today, but we will see why it's true with a general example of 4 by 4 matrices. Make sure you remember your terms. What we have here is just a normal matrix, but if all of the terms below the main diagonal were zeros, that would be an upper triangular matrix. And if all of the terms above the main diagonal were zeros, then that would be a lower triangular matrix. And of course, if everything's zero except for the entries on the main diagonal, then that is a diagonal matrix. We'll do some examples applying this theorem to triangular matrices in a minute, but let's first see why it's true. Here is a general example of an upper triangular matrix. What is the determinant of this matrix? Well, we could calculate it using the cofactor expansion of any row or column. This bottom row has all zeros except for the last entry, so that'll be easy. Let's do the cofactor expansion of that row. Then the determinant will be this first entry, 0, times the determinant of this minor matrix, and that's just going to be 0. It will be similar for this entry, 0, similar for this entry, 0, and then finally the only non-zero term will be this entry multiplied by the determinant of this sub-matrix, and that's what you see here. So we have A44 times the determinant of that submatrix. So then what is the determinant of this submatrix? Well, we can calculate that with a cofactor expansion. And this third row is easy to use because it's mostly zeros. Again, we would have zero times a determinant of that submatrix. Same thing here, it would give us another zero. And then we would multiply by A33 and multiply that by the determinant of this submatrix. Now we have A44 times A33, both parts of the main diagonal, and that's getting multiplied by the determinant of this matrix. We can continue the cofactor expansion. We'll use this row since it has a zero. The zero is just going to give us a zero, and then we need to multiply by A22 times the determinant of this submatrix. That's just the determinant of a single entry, and the determinant of that, by definition, is just that entry. So by applying the cofactor expansion definition of the determinant to this matrix, we find that its determinant is A44 times A33 times A22 times A11. It's just the product of the entries on the main diagonal. Pretty nice. And here is more or less the same exact process written out for a lower triangular matrix. In this case, we use a cofactor expansion of the top row because that's the one with the most zeros, and this proceeds in very much the same way. As you can see, the only entries that actually come into the computation here end up being the entries that are on the main diagonal. So if we consider just a diagonal matrix that has zeros, outside of the diagonal, well, the computation is still going to be the same as these because the only entries that affect the computation are those on the diagonal. So if we turn everything else to zeros to make it just a diagonal matrix, well, we're still going to get the same thing. So for a diagonal matrix, this still applies. Its determinant is just the product of the entries on the main diagonal. Let's do some examples. These exercises are from Howard Anton's Linear Algebra Text. Link in the description if you're interested in that. We're just asked to evaluate the determinant of the given matrix by inspection, which means it's really easy. You can pretty much just look and calculate it in your head because these are triangular matrices. So we can apply the theorem that we just learned. Here's problem 27. It's a diagonal matrix. Its determinant is just the product of the entries along its diagonal. We'll use some sloppy notation here and just write det for determinant 
I won't bother with names. We don't have a ton of space here. So just multiply all these entries. One times negative one is negative one. And when we multiply that by one, we get negative one. That's the determinant. The matrix in problem 28 is also a diagonal matrix. Its determinant can be found by just multiplying across the main diagonal. That's two cubed, which is eight. 29, we have a lower triangular matrix. Its determinant can be found by just multiplying across the main diagonal. Uh, in this case, you see that's going to be zero. Anytime that a matrix has a row or a column of all zeros, its determinant will be zero, which is an immediate consequence of the cofactor expansion definition of the determinant. Here is problem 30. This is an upper triangular matrix. Multiply across the main diagonal in order to find the determinant. That's going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. Problem 31, we have an upper triangular matrix. We can calculate the determinant by multiplying across the main diagonal. That ends up just being 2 times 3, which is 6. Finally, problem 32 is a lower triangular matrix. We will multiply across the main diagonal, and what we get is negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6 times 3 is positive 18. And it's as easy as that. If you've got a triangular matrix, its determinant could not be easier to calculate. Just multiply across the main diagonal. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my linear algebra playlist in the description for more. Thanks for watching.